All right, welcome to video 41. We're going to talk about using zeros for these higher degree polynomials. In the last video, we just learned what a polynomial graph looks like at the extremes, what it does as x approaches negative infinity and positive infinity, and that is very helpful to us. But what about the middle? What happens in between? Well, in the end, there will be a ton of tools that we can use to figure it out. Emphasis on the word ton. And some also in calculus class. We're going to start off by learning about zeros, and then we're going to learn some more later on. Particularly in section, I believe it's 2.5. That has a whole bunch of stuff to help you figure out zeros. But zero, defining the zeros is a really, really uh, good way of figuring out what happens in between the extremes in the middle of the graph. Yes, the first and the easiest is finding the zeros. Remember, the zeros are where the graph crosses the x-axis. And we've already figured out how to find zeros by factoring. Uh, we have learned the quadratic formula as well back in uh, Algebra 2. But do we have any way of knowing how many zeros there are? We do. That's one of the things that we're going to learn here. All right. Uh, there's many ways of seeing the same thing in terms of zero. So, you know, the book likes to mix things up and ask you one thing one time and another thing the next time. And sometimes they're just asking the same thing or saying the same thing. So in terms of zeros, all of these are different ways of saying that. Uh, well, obviously, x equals a is a zero of the function f. Another way of saying that is x equals a is a solution of the polynomial equation f of x equals 0. We can also say x minus a is a factor of the polynomial f of x. We can also say that the coordinate a0 is an x-intercept of the graph. So those are all the same way of saying uh, that we're talking about a zero, where it crosses the x-axis. Now there's one more interesting feature about zeros that we're going to use, and that is, since a zero is an intercept on the x-axis, we know that the graph is going to cross at that point. However, a repeated zero, and by that I mean a zero that occurs more than once, has yet another meaning. And this is important. A factor x minus a to the k, where k is greater than 1, yields a repeated 0, x equals a, of multiplicity k. All right, so let me just, before we get too far into it, Let's say that you factored out a polynomial completely, and it looked like x minus 2, x plus 1 squared. All right. 2 is a 0. Negative 1 is a 0. But... Notice that we have this square right there. That tells us that it is a repeated zero. It happens more than once. This thing could also be rewritten as x minus 2, x plus 1, x plus 1. All right, that negative 1 occurs more than once. It is a repeated zero. All right, in this particular case that I have drawn there, the multiplicity is this number. 
And that number is going to tell us a couple of things. If that multiplicity is odd, that means that the graph crosses the x-axis at that point A. All right, so if you had x minus 1, x plus 2 to the fifth, okay, the multiplicity here and here, 1, 5, they're both odd. Okay, they both have an odd multiplicity. That tells us that the graph is going to cross the x-axis at 1 and negative 2. So whatever else happens in this graph, we know that at 1 and at negative 2, the graph is going to be crossing. All right, now I know this may not make a whole lot of sense yet, but just bear with it. If, the, if uh, the multiplicity is even, then the graph touches the x-axis at 8, but does not cross. All right, so if I had a function x minus 1 and x plus 2 squared, this is an odd multiplicity, and this is even. It tells us that at 2, the graph touches. And at 1, it crosses. All right, so the graph comes down and touches at negative 2, but it crosses at 1. It does that because the multiplicity of 1 is odd and the multiplicity of 2 is even. That's going to help us when we make our graphs. So again, this is, this is kind of what I'm talking about. This graph touches without crossing at this point. Therefore, when it gets factored out, it could have multiplicity of 2 or 4 or whatever the case may be. Okay, let's say that this, this point happens to be x equals negative 4. All right, so maybe it's x plus 4 to the 2, or x plus 4 to the 10, or x plus 4 to the 16. It's an even multiple. Elsewhere on the graph, it crosses right there. So that, we know, has an odd multiplicity. Maybe it is x minus 2 to the 1, or x minus 2 to the 3rd. All right, so let's kind of piece this together a little bit. We're going to combine last section and this section. We're going to use the left and right hand behavior and the zeros to make the following graph. Okay, now the left and right hand behavior. You have to realize that if you were to distribute this whole thing, you would have an x squared and another x to get x to the third. All right, so you know it is a third degree polynomial. You also know that the coefficients you have a 1 there and a 1 there. That means our coefficient is going to be a 1. So we know that it is a third degree with a positive coefficient. We don't actually have to crank out the multiplication. We can just kind of see it. We have an x squared and an x, both with 1s. That's going to be x cubed, and it's going to be positive. All right, now based on our left and right hand behavior, from the leading coefficient test, that tells us that our graphs are going to be going in that direction. That's that table that we had in the last one. 
positive third degree goes in that direction. All right, so here's what else we know. It's already factored. So we know that we have zeros at 1 and that the 0 at 1 has a multiplicity of 2. We know that we have a 0 at negative 2. Whoops, yeah. We know that we have a 0 at negative 2 and that has a multiplicity of 1. All right. <clears throat> that tells us a lot about how to graph this problem. Because if you think about it, we know that it crosses here, so it's going to be going down like that. We know that it touches here, so it's just going to be going like this. How do we know that it's touching here instead of, say, there? Well, because if you were to try to draw this graph out, this is going up at some point. It's got to come back down to get to this right here because it has to touch right there. The only places that it touches the x-axis is at 1 and negative 2. All right, so that's a lot of information. We know that. We know that. The only thing that I'd like to do at this point is try to figure out how high does that peak go. Okay, we know, does it go right there? Does it go here, here? We need to find out about where it is. So I might plot a couple of points between there. Try to make it a little bit easy on yourself. Plug in negative 1, plug in 0, and that should be enough to give us a good picture. All right, uh, f of negative 1 ends up to be 4. All right, so we have a point up there. f of 0 happens to be 2. So we have a point right there. Okay, uh, and remember I, in the characteristics of polynomials I said it's very smooth, it's not, doesn't have sharp points or anything. So you have enough information there, finish it by drawing a smooth curve through it. And it looks like this. Okay, so that's how we use the zeros. Uh, pay attention to that multiplicity. It's a, it's a big deal. That's it for this video. Adios.